on this episode of the Blue Stable Podcast. The Colts signed another quarterback. No, there's not going to be any competition there in front or behind him. And what are the Colts' chances of sweeping the NFC East? All that and more on this episode of the Blue Stable Podcast. Uh. Rashad, it has finally happened, brother. It has finally happened, my guy. The Colts have a new QB2, two, two, not one, two. They have a new QB2, and it's it, it's it's sort of, you know, been in the works a little bit. But, my guy, first off, before we get into all that, how are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, man. I got to be feeling pretty good. It's not every day you can sign a Super Bowl MVP to be your quarterback, too. So I'm ecstatic about that, man, and ready to tackle this episode. Yeah, all that, man. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's been feeling good. You you and I know, you know, I, I'm in good spirits with what's going on right now. There's a game going on right now as we're recording with my Dallas Mavericks down 0-3. But, hey, what do you expect facing a damn dynasty? You know what I mean? Um, that's like the damn Jaguars expecting to beat the Patriots. Like, come on now. Um, but uh, other than that, man, let's get into it. The Colts have signed a new quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. Nick Foles, former Super Bowl MVP, Nick Foles. Rashad. We have a Super Bowl MVP on our roster, man. How do you feel? We have a regular season MVP as our starter, and now we have a Super Bowl MVP as our QB, too. I'm excited, man. Nick Fold comes in bringing us a lot of experience. Let's be honest here. When you, when you go attack the offseason like the Colts did, you can't expect for Sam Ellinger to be your quarterback, too. If, if Matt Ryan goes down, you can't give the keys to – the limousine or the keys to the Ferrari to Sam Ellinger. That's just not the way it works. So they had to get somebody who has some experience, somebody who has driven a Ferrari before and they got their quarterback too with Nick Foles. A lot of people say the writing was on the wall that this was a foregone conclusion. I'm glad to see it's official, a two year deal for a very good price. I'm excited, man. And look, and, and I agree, you know, I, I was pushing for quarterback to be literally the only biggest thing you really have to address. So to go out, get Nick Foles, and it's a two-year deal. It's not just a one-off, you know, just come in and we'll, you know, have some insurance this year and then we'll, you know, look for another one next year. No, at both spots, QB1 and QB2, they have them for two years now. And I think it's a real good indication not only was it a right fit, a good fit, you know, get that, get it a right fit, but um, wow, it, 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 wow. It, it, it's amazing, right? Puns all over the Blue Stable podcast, uh, <laughs> right? But here, here's the thing: you now have Matt Ryan, Nick Foles on the books for two years, basically giving yourself insurance in case something happens to Matt Ryan. You're not fishing around finding another vet or trying to look through the draft or finding an undrafted free agent, you go and get a guy that you know has performed pretty well under under Frank Reich. And in that Super Bowl run, a lot of people don't understand that Frank Reich was one of the biggest uh, reasons why Nick Foles was able to play the way he played because Frank Reich sort of, when he was creating the game plans with uh, Doug Peterson in those playoffs, heading into the playoffs, he got some regular season games under his belt as well that season. He changed the game, the game plan a little bit. You know, what worked for Nick Foles? How, what does he see great? What, does he, what is he not good at? What is he slow with? What is he fast with? 
he had a lot to do with that. So to be able to bring Matt Ryan, Nick Foles in as your quarterback room, I love it. Regardless of what people think of Nick Foles when he was in formerly, you know, St. Louis or hell, even Philly before the whole Super Bowl run. Oh, the first time in Philly. Yeah, the first time, right? Yeah. It's a stable room. Like Mm -hmm. Rashad said, you're not going into this year with technically Frank Reich and Chris Ballard's job on the line. That's what the media is not telling everybody. That's not what the culture coming out and saying. Behind closed doors, I believe that, and I've heard some whispers, I'm pretty sure Rashad has done too, Ballard and Reich are under a microscope now, more so than they have been in their entire tenure. They went out, made some great moves, got a good quarterback room. You are not going to go into this year with Sam Ellinger, never taking an NFL snap, didn't even perform that great in training camp, in preseason, none of that. So you're not going to go into there saying if something happens with Matt Ryan, we have our belief in Sam Ellinger to do something in spot minutes, in spot snaps. You know what I mean? And really, we harp about the quarterback, too. Is it really an important position? Is He's just mainly holding a clipboard. But that's the thing. You have to be good at holding a clipboard, knowing the signals. And if something happens, especially on a team that has aspirations like the Colts, If you want to get somewhere in December, January, February, you got to be able to have depth all across your roster. And that includes the quarterback position, someone that you believe in, in in your quarterback too. Look at Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes got injured in that divisional game against Cleveland. And who came to save the day? Who came out and made pass after pass after pass? What's his name, Rashad? Uh, I don't want to say it, bro, because he doesn't deserve credit for for that win, for that win he got over Cleveland. But I, but, I'm he, let us... but he made throws though. He 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 didn't put the game in harm's way, right? No, of course not. And that's what right. a veteran do for you. That's what a backup quarterback is supposed to do. So no, Nick Foles is not coming in leading us to seventeen and zero. No, none of that. Okay, I welcome it, but not happening. It's solid depth. It's solid. It's great. It's a great signing. Uh, They waived uh, James Morgan, a quarterback, on the depth chart as well. Sam Ellinger is going to be the QB3. But, guys, let's just be honest. Colts are carrying two quarterbacks, Matt Ryan, Nick Foles, Sam Ellinger. Days as a Colt is probably numbered now. Honestly, I couldn't care less, honestly. Like, as a – in terms of football, let's give that practice squad to spot to someone that could could potentially be a little bit more reliable. You know, not somebody who struggles throwing past 10, 15 yards in the NFL, as we've seen. So got much love. But Rashad, we're not going to harp on it too much. It is quarterback two. uh, But two years is definitely notable because you project that this Matt Ryan uh, relationship is going to be two or potentially more years. So you got insurance there. And your roster right now looks really, really good on paper. So. Mm -hmm. Other than that, guys, let's get into the next segment. But before we do that, it's time for our first official sponsor of the Blue Stable. Support for the Blue Stable is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped. (laughs) Who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, Manscaped performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, Join over 4 million men worldwide worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off plus shipping and handling with the code BSTABLE2. That is BSTABLE2. B, of course, standing for the blue stable. BSTABLE2. Make sure you use that to get 20% off and free shipping and handling at manscaped.com and guys before we move on real quick if you if you just go to the manscaped.com look you can get a fine nose hair trimmer if any of you guys ever you know some of us have every nose right it it happens you know it's nothing to be like insecure about or anything this is such an amazing tool it's a great tool even has a little light up button and everything when it's on lets you know when it's on soft vibration 
all that good stuff, guys. They have cologne. They have all the things that you probably need. They sent us shirts and, and, and uh, boxer briefs. My girlfriend ended up taking the boxer briefs and turned them into shorts, Rashad. <laughs> so I guess if, if you women love comfortable underwear, go to the manscaped.com because they have great underwear that can be turned into shorts. Okay. So other than that, guys, uh, <laughs> This is a great tool. I'm just saying that um, if you want an early Christmas shop, whatever the case may be, go to manscaped.com, get you a nose hair trimmer, get you a whole entire performance package with a toiletry bag. Manscaped, hey. nice fine leather, everything's good to go, guys. Shout out Manscaped as well. Now, that was obviously shout out Manscaped, but now, Rashad, we're going to bring something a little bit different to the show, Okay. We always talk about the Texans, the Jaguars, obviously the Titans, because they're the main competition. We talk about the Chiefs, talk about the Bills, right? We always talk about these AFC teams we're going to be playing in, you know, potentially January. But we're not talking about the teams that we could potentially face in February or who we're going to face this season. And that's the NFC least division, (laughs) all right? (laughs) The Philadelphia Eagles, the Dallas Cowboys, the Washington Commanders, not the football team anymore, and the G-Men of New York, the New York Giants. So, Rashad, we're going to break both potential matchups on paper. Right now, where we think, you know, the Colts have the advantage at, uh, we're going to start with the Cowboys as well. Obviously, that's a favorite, a favorite team people like to talk about. So, let's go through there. Let's focus on their offense versus our defense. So obviously at quarterback, you got Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, that combo running back uh, duo. C.D. Lamb is now stepping into the wide receiver one spot after Amari Cooper has been traded to the Cleveland Browns. Michael Gallup coming off an unfortunate ACL tear, but he will be the QB2 of the Dallas Cowboys. And then you got James Washington, who has been forgotten about as a signing for the Dallas Cowboys. They did draft Jalen Tolbert, as I did mention a couple of shows ago, uh, discussing T.Y. Hilton and everything. Jalen Tolbert from South Alabama, a very solid prospect who can do some great things in an offense like Dallas. But James Washington is there and is slotted to be their slot receiver. So speed, speed, and physicality in that wide receiver room. Then you go to the tight end. Dalton Schultz. They were able to retain Dalton Schultz. Solid tight end. I really like him. Obviously, I would have taken him as our uh, tight end one when he was a free agent. Dallas locked him up. So very solid uh, tight end, pass catching, blocking, the whole deal. This is where it gets interesting because the offensive line for the Cowboys in the past years, you think, oh, man, they're great. They're stout. That hasn't necessarily been the case lately. Left tackle Tyron Smith has dealt with injury after injury, whether if it was ankle, back, neck it's mainly been the back and neck and i really get scared about back and neck when it comes to linemen especially that are getting older like tyron smith but then you go across the line their new left guard their rookie tyler smith who i liked as a tackle like in the third round and they took him as a guard in the first round which was crazy um and obviously we know the deal there especially as our guy zach hicks a fan of the show He just grabbed onto any human being he could possibly do and had so many penalties for holding, uh, not pass interference, just holding and false starts and all this stuff. So how is he going to play? No one knows. Tyler Biades, Zach Martin, all pro Zach Martin, and then Terrence Steele, who has done some spot snaps for them in the past. And then obviously you look at our defense. We know what our defense is. Quiddy Pay, Yannick Ngakwe, DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart, Bobby Okereke, Darius Leonard, Kenny Moore, Stephon Gilmore, Isaiah Rogers, Rodney McLeod, Kari Willis, Julian Blackman, once he comes back from the Achilles tear, we know how all that sounds. So, uh, Rashad, real quick, talking about this offense and defense combo, where do you think the Colts have the strength? And just looking at the matchup just on paper, where do you think the Colts can, you know, exploit some of their weaknesses and who can really be, a terror a terrorizer of that offense in Dallas um you got to start up front you know uh, uh, you spoke about it briefly but that would be the Cowboys you know weakest I think position group on offense is the offensive line 
which is weird because the Cowboys had one of the best offensive lines in the NFL just a couple of years ago. But, you know, this close defense match up really well. I like their two running backs, uh, Zeke and Pollard, two different type of guys. Pollard more of the home run threat. Zeke more of the every down guy. Although it appears Zeke has lost a step in the past couple of years. I've seen some workout videos of him trying to get back into it. So who knows what he's going to look like. I expect Pollard to still be just as explosive as he's been in the past couple of years. But our linebackers and our defensive line is prepared for that match. We we, we always play the, the run pretty well. I'm not expecting them to have an explosive game on the ground. I think it's going to come down to Dak and his passing offense. Um, Like you said, he was able to, to retain Dalton Schultz. They got C.D. Lamb, who should be emerging. This this is a big year for CD taking on that that primary number one role without Amari Cooper on the other side of him taking some of the pressure off of him. He's now the guy that's going to get all the attention. You know, Michael Gallup is going to be coming back off of uh, off of an injury, a severe injury at that. So we're going to see him play that number two role. The Cowboys really took a step back as a whole, man. It, you know, losing losing Amari Cooper, losing Cedric Wilson, also, you know, those losses are going to hurt in the passing game. They're going to hope, like you said, for James Washington to come in and step in and be a contributor. But there's big shoes to fill for C.D. Lamb. You know, there's shoes to fill for Michael Gallup. They all have to elevate as a unit. Dak is a solid, solid quarterback. I, I love his attitude. I love his mentality, you know. But I think our biggest advantage is our defensive line against their offensive line. Yeah, I think when I look at this matchup, of course it's going to be about disrupting Dak. This past year, he kind of, I suspected a little bit when I talked to a couple of my friends that were Mavericks fans and they talked about Dak Prescott is going to have a resurgence year. He's going to do all this. And I'm just, I'm reminding them of a horrific injury he suffered. Right. I mean, Mm -hmm. he still has to gain strength and mobilize that ankle because a big part of his game has been escaping pressure, rolling out in the pocket, stepping up in the pocket, extending plays, And that's something he wasn't able to do last year. This year, I suspect his ankle is a little bit better, you know, in terms of just being mobile and everything. Sorry, guys, got to drink talking a lot. Um, But when it comes to Dak Prescott, I feel like you have to pressure him. And one of the things that I'm interested in when it comes to Frank Reich and Chris Strasser, what are they going to do about whoever is on the interior are they going to move DeForest Buckner away from Zach Martin is my question. I mean, me potentially, I would put um, switch up the, the alignment, obviously, for, well, not Chris Strasser and Frank Reich, Gus Bradley and Nate Ollie for our, our defensive line. Switch up that matchup. Put Grover on Zach Martin so that way, you know, their best lineman is on their best run stuffer. But – if you put DeForest Buckner on Tyler Smith, now, again, I'm not dogging him or anything. Got to get to the season, see how he performs. But right now, he looks suspect on the offensive line. I want that matchup. And, again, this game is going down December 4th, Sunday night football. So a lot of football is going to be played. We're going to know who, who these teams are by then. I would really like to exploit that matchup right there. Uh, Yannick Ngakwe, Quiddy Pay versus Tyron Smith or Terrence Steele on the outside. And then you got Dio coming in. Uh, other guys, Tyquan Lewis, Ben Banigou, these guys that the Colts and Gus Bradley really, really like, really, really wanted back. There were conversations of letting one go, trading one, or just cut flat out cutting one. Gus Bradley says, no, I like them. Bring them back. And uh, Chris Ballard also likes these two guys as well. So that's going to be interesting to say. But I really want to see the secondary, not just the corners, the secondary versus the wide receiver core because Amari Cooper being gone, I have my own opinions about Amari Cooper. I didn't think he was all that. I didn't think he was the true number one in Dallas. Uh, He came in and out of games way too much for me. He disappeared at some of the biggest moments, battling injuries all the time. Even though he didn't miss games, he wasn't practicing because he was always dealing with something. And that's good when you're 26, 27, but when you start getting older, how much is he going to keep that up? C.D. Lamb, on the other hand, I mean, didn't prove a lot when he had Andy Dalton. I see Terry McLaurin, who's a different type of receiver, ball out with any quarterback that he has. So, I don't know, man. C.D. Lamb, 
I haven't you, seen I haven't seen he but he had that miraculous catch. Don't get me wrong, he had that miraculous catch. Remember his rookie year against Minnesota, that one of the greatest catches I've ever seen, honestly. But what what do you think about that? You know, going against these receivers, Michael Gallup, obviously, again, it's in December. He's going to have playing time under him, James Washington, Jalen Tolbert. But CeeDee Lamb is the one I want to focus on, whether if it's Stephon Gilmore, Isaiah Rogers, Brandon Fashion. Do you you think CeeDee Lamb is that number one, true number one? The same thing that we say about Michael Pittman. A number one cannot be taken out of the game. Do you view CD Lamb as such? Yeah, I mean, you have to. Well, you have to when you look at his ability and what he can do. You know, he has a full route tree. He's explosive. He has the size, the speed, uh, the the hands. You know, some things. The routine stuff for me is frustrating to watch CD Lamb. Sometimes he drops. He has mental lapses. He drops some of the routine passes. But the spectacular stuff, the stuff, the holy shit stuff. Like he makes those plays. Like he 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 just does. You know, he's he's a stud. He's a stud. He's a stud. I didn't I didn't like what he did when he had Andy Dalton. When he just had Andy Dalton, I would have liked to see more production out of him. But I couldn't really penalize him too much for that. In big time situations, though, C.D. Lamb is a guy that can dominate a football game, and, and I think he's going to be a, a, a bona fide number one in this league. Uh, if I had a choice out of Michael Pittman and C.D. Lamb right now, it'd be really close for me, honestly. It'd be really close between those two. I like them both. I like them both for different reasons. They're both different kind of receivers, but they're both super talented. Yeah. I mean, Michael Pittman was selected 34th overall. I think C.D. Lamb was selected 15th, I think, mm-hmm. in, in, in that draft. So, honestly, I wouldn't even be mad if you – chose Mercedes Lamb over Michael Pittman because they are similar. Mm-hmm. Um, the quarterback play, obviously, is rookie year with Andy Dalton, and then Michael Pittman had Phillip Rivers and had Carson Wentz. You could go back and forth on who you would take, who has more dog, who's more physical. I think Michael Pittman, obviously. Um, but in terms of just playing out football, wide receiver, it is close. They're, they're good route runners. They have great hands, solid blockers, both of them. Uh, and I don't think that's something that CeeDee Lamb doesn't get enough credit for. So that's the offense. And, of course, the safeties for hours. How are they going to, you know, protect that deep ball? Because you know the Cowboys going to want to throw it deep. You know they're going to want to. You know they're going to throw deep to James Washington, Jalen Tolbert, Michael Gallup, those guys that really get deep targets. It's going to be interesting to watch. Let's flip the field a little bit here, guys. Uh we already talked about you – know, we already know who's on our defense, just so you know, again, on our offense, again, across the line, left tackle to be decided between Matt Pryor and uh, Bernard Ryman, left guard Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, right guard, we would assume it's Danny Pinter, but again, maybe Danny Pinter, maybe Will Fries, maybe Matt Pryor, maybe Bernard Ryman, who knows? Right tackle, Braden Smith, wide receivers – Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce, Paris Campbell, running backs, Jonathan Taylor, Naheem Hines, tight ends, Jelani Woods, Jelani Woods, Jelani Woods, Jelani Woods. <laughs> and the Mo Alley Cox hate is real, man. Oh, the Mo Alley Cox hate is Mo Alley Cox and Kylan Granson, of course, at the quarterback room that we just discovered. We don't need to harp on who Matt Ryan is. He's great. Now let's flip the field for the Cowboys defense. This is really where – it's going to get interesting, okay? Let's start just across their starting lineup, all right? Big gums, yapping, no stat padding. Demarcus Lawrence, defensive end, got his money and fell off the face of the earth. Carlos Watkins, Neville Gallimore, Dante Fowler, big name, not sure how great he is. Devontae Bond, Leighton Vander Esch, obviously, and then Micah Parsons. Looks like he's going to be the best pass rusher in football for years to come after a great rookie year. This is where I kind of struggle with this defense in the secondary. Anthony Brown, J. Ron Curse, our very own, we love him, Malik Hooker, Trayvon Diggs. Obviously, Trayvon had the 11 interceptions. Malik Hooker has taken some time. It's taken him a little bit to get back to his form after battling some injuries. But the two other guys, what the hell? Like, I, I'm, I'm struggling here, uh, Rashad. 
So talking about, let, let's start up front, the matchups. Neil Gallimore, Carlos Watkins, that's not scary to me against Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, whoever we plug at right guard. That's not scary to me one bit. I'm not scared of Carlos Watkins or Neville Gallimore. Not one bit. But when you go to the outside, well, technically the left side, that guy, Michael Parsons, man. I don't know who the hell our left tackle is right now. I When we talk about left tackle, when I talk with Destin, I don't give a damn how technically sound Bernard Raymond is. I don't give a crap how big Matt Pryor is. Someone needs to guard that dude. Cover, block, whatever the case may be, they need to be able to block that man because that is a bad man. Sorry if I'm getting a little bit loud here, guys. Michael Parsons is legit. Now, on the right side, Braden Smith facing Demarcus Lawrence. I'll take that matchup, honestly. I I don't know about you. Maybe give me a couple pancakes on big gums over there. I'm all for it. So staying on the interior, our offensive line versus their defensive line, who do you give the edge right now? Just staying on interior, I would have to go with our offensive line. Like I I don't even think it's close, to be honest. Dallas uh, defensive line, it, the production comes from the ends. Let's be serious here, like you spoke about. Uh, Rand, Randy Gregory is going to be a big loss for them, um, him not returning. One of their premier sack getters on that defensive line and pressure getters. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, great player, great player, but I like the matchup. I think Braden Swift, uh, Braden Swift, Braden Smith will be okay on him. I think Braden Smith can block him. But I don't know what we're going to do with Michael Parsons. I'm sorry, man. He's a freak. The guy is a freak of nature. I don't know what we're going to do to stop him. Maybe we give him some chip help. We'll put a tight end over there, give him some chip help. Maybe we keep a running back in the backfield. As much as Frank Reich hates to do it, because he likes to get everybody out on route so he can have options. We have to do something, though, because can't nobody block him. Not one-on-one. He's going to eat. We just have to deal with it. We just hope that they have a plan in place. But that's that's clearly the biggest advantage for Dallas. I don't even think just up front. I think in the whole game, that is the biggest mismatch that Dallas have in this game is Michael Parsons versus whoever's playing left tackle for the Colts. Definitely. And mm-hmm. when I think about the run game, Dallas has been so bad at defending the run. Absolutely. And Leighton Vander Esch, not that great in, in run stopping and pass coverage. He has gotten better. But I, I, Devontae Band, what am I supposed to do with that? Carlos Watkins, Neville Gallimore, Leighton Vander Esch, and Devontae Band? Who is Devontae Band? I have no idea. Malik Hooker, he's not coming up and, and playing in the box. No. He's not doing that. No. He's playing single safety. And then yeah. J. Ron Curse, I. Who do you think? Head up, Jonathan Taylor or J. Ron Curse? Nah, let's 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 not even entertain. Let's not remark. even entertain it because he's gonna end up like a Monty Hooker did. So, <laughs> well, let, let's let's not do that. But in the run game, that's where I just expect the Colts to just flat out bully them. Now, of course, mm-hmm. again on paper, that's one thing. But when you get down on that field, it's gonna be another. And maybe national media will say the same thing. The run defense is not good. But then sometimes about stopping the run, the little bit I know about football, when it comes to stopping the run as a defensive lineman and linebacker, sometimes it's just about one, two. It's about desire. It's about me out hustling everybody else. That's what it comes down to. So is Ryan Ryan Kelly, Quentin Nelson, Danny Pinter, are they going to out hustle these guys? That'll be remain to be seen. Our wide receivers, Matt Ryan, Michael Pittman versus Trayvon Diggs. Give me Michael Pittman 20 times out of 10. This dude, he he had 11 interceptions. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he was even close to deserving first team all pro over JC Jackson. But I think I would have given him second team because at some point for a corner, interceptions have to be a factor. At some point, you got to talk about it. And and I, I, I was all for giving him second team all pro. But this dude got worked every single game. When he wasn't playing Taylor Heineke, Daniel Jones, 
Kirk Cousins, Jalen Hurts, freaking who was that other uh Mike Glennon when he wasn't facing bottom tier quarterbacks, he was getting cooked. He was getting cooked. Matt Ryan ain't no Taylor Heineke. I love me some Taylor Heineke. Well, I was Heineke. about to say, you love Taylor Heineke. I, I love Taylor book. Heineke. Don't get me wrong. I wrote a whole article on why we could trade Carson to Washington for Taylor Heineke. Don't go look that up, by the way, now. Um, but anyway. I'll, ta- I'll tag. I'll put it in the description. Right, man. right. <laughs> Call me out. Call me out, Michael. Uh, but that's one thing, especially those other receivers. I mean, those quarterback wide receiver combos. Come on now. C- come on. You, you got to give me something a little bit better. You got to give me more on tape. And then he picked off Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Rookie Mac Jones. Okay. All right. So him versus Michael Pittman. Dude, I'm excited for th- I- I'm excited for this because I do believe Trayvon Diggs is better than what he's been putting on tape outside of the interceptions. I do think he's better than that. So can he make that jump? Can he make a jump into his third year? That'll be remain to be seen. But Alec Pierce, Paris Campbell, hell, who else do we even have in this in this wide receiver core? They're <laughs> gonna have to eat. That's when, what I'm saying. When Trayvon Diggs is carding Michael Pittman, and let's just put out there: Trayvon Diggs locks down Michael Pittman. Someone else is gonna have to step up. Someone else is gonna have to make plays. I'm not putting the weight of the world on Alec Pierce. He's a rookie. He just got here. Come on now. Paris Campbell, can he stay healthy? And that's that's one of the issues I have with this team. You know, when we go against guys that has bona fide number one corners like a Trayvon Diggs or any other team that we're going against, who is going to step up besides Michael Pittman? You know, that was literally all we had last season. And I think eventually it will Michael Pittman down. If you saw he went into kind of a slump in the middle of the season and he wasn't quite as productive as he was, but I think he just got wore down. There was nobody to take any pressure off of him. And and this year is supposed to be different, but this room don't really look like it's going to be any different unless we see a big step from, from Pierce. And I don't want to put that kind of pressure on Pierce as a rookie. So right now, right now, standing, sitting here on the Blue Stable podcast, Tuesday, May 24th, who would you say takes this game December 4th? I'm taking Indianapolis. Uh, Sunday Colts, night football, prime I think time. Colts, I think Colts lose a close game. Colts play that Monday night, if I'm not mistaken. They play the Monday before that, so that, that'll be a short week for them. Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. Coming, yeah. The Pittsburgh game, short week, going to Dallas and play – Dallas, I, I do think Dallas is the only team in the NFC East that beats them this year, this season. I think they go three and one. That's actually interesting that you bring up because they do lose an extra day of rest playing that Monday mm-hmm. night game and then playing Sunday night, but also it's Sunday night. So you do get a little bit more time. Guys can sleep in a little bit instead of waking up at six, seven, they can wake mm-hmm. up at 10. So that so, may, now, if it was me, which win matters more, Pittsburgh or Dallas that week? I'll take Pittsburgh. Conference opponent. Absolutely. Tiebreaker against yeah. potential other guys. I'll take that win over Dallas. Now let's get to the New York Giants, all right? Now we'll speed this up a little bit more because this is the Giants. Come on now. Uh, quarterback, right. Daniel Jones, running back, Saquon Barkley, Kenny Galladay. Sterling Shepard, Cardarius Tony at the wide receiver room. You got Ricky Seals Jones, who did play solid in Washington, got to New York in free agency as the tight end. Lost, uh, man, I, I'm for Evan Ingram. Lost Evan Ingram in free agency to Jacksonville. Then your uh, offensive line. You got Andrew Thomas, former first round pick. You got Joshua Ezunda. He was actually a solid. Um, prospect that I really like this year, and he's gonna he's sl- slated to, slotted to be their number one left guard right now. So obviously already a ton of youth. We go to center, Joe Feliciano. Okay, and then we go right guard, <laughs> our guy Mark Glowinski. Mark, shout out the glow, man. Shout out glow, and then right tackle. Me personally, left tackle one or tackle one in, in this past draft class, 
Evan Neal. So looking at that offense, man, the offensive line does, you know, make me pause a little bit. You know, Mark Glinski solid. Joshua Azunda, I liked him a, a lot. And then you got Evan Neal. Andrew Thomas has struggled, struggled in the league so far. But then you look at the wide receivers. You could say, hey, man, that, that's solid. And then, and then Saquon Barkley? But then you remind yourself who the quarterback is. Daniel Jones, who no knock on him. Solid guy, solid kid, solid man. But let's just face it. He's not good at quarterback. Let's just face it. Come on now. This is going to be his fifth year. He's not making some fifth-year jump. Um, he has struggled mightily. He got benched embarrassingly. And real quick, we can just we can just talk about this very quickly, uh, Rashad. I like our advantages in every single matchup, honestly, with that's the defensive line creating pressure outside, inside. Our linebackers stopping the run. They got our athletic running back. We got technically three athletic linebackers, Darius Leonard, Bobby Okereke, EJ Speed. They can go with him. They can run with him. Secondary, we got poss- possibly on paper as a room, room possibly the best safety room in, in, in the league on paper. Cornerbacks, solid. Stephon Gilmore, Isaiah Rogers, Kenny Moore inside. We can make this quick. Yeah, uh, let's be honest here. I, I love the coach matchup. Uh, defensively against their offense. As long as Daniel Jones is the quarterback, I do like the new staff that's in place. Brian Dable, I think, is going to be a fine head coach. He's pretty much trying to clean house this year, though. It's it's not going to be – the Giants are not looking to compete. They'll have a couple nice uh, – a couple of nice performances because they're really talented as far as in the skill position with Saquon Barkley, Galladay, uh, Kadarius Tony. They have talented players, Darius Slayton. But let's be serious. As long as Daniel Jones is their quarterback, they're not going to pose a threat in that division, and they're not going to pose a threat to the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts will play them in Week 17. That'll be New Year's Day, I believe. Uh, we can't bring bring in 2023 with a loss. We just can't do it. You know, around that time, we're going to be looking to wrap up the division, hit, get ready for the playoffs, and that's the, one of those type of games you win coming down the stretch. Uh, last year, we had two games to put away the season. We had a game against the Raiders and a game against Jacksonville. We lost both of them, found ourselves outside the playoffs. This year, I got a feeling it's going to come down to a similar situation. Week 17, we play the Giants. Week 18, we play the Texans. We should be able to win both of those games, similar situation to last year. This year, we handle our business. I think the veteran quarterback, I think a, a, a really, really strong leadership with his team will not let what happened last year happen this year. So I, I like the Colts matchup all, all over the board. Their defense, this defense is going to stack up well against majority of these offense that we talk about because this is just one of those defenses on paper that should be a top five defense. And and we'll see how that how that unfolds this season coming up. Yeah, I'm curious to see what new head coach Brian Dabble can, can do coming over from Buffalo as the offensive coordinator, now the head coach in uh, for the New York Giants. So I'm curious to see how he can change the offense up a little bit, but you just can't change a quarterback from being not good to good. I mean, it, sometimes you just don't have it. And that's not too much of a knock on Daniel Jones. I just don't know why he was slated as a first-round quarterback. I don't know why. Right, uh, right. So, hey, I mean, at least he's friends with the Mannings, I guess, you know, with Eli and everything. <laughs> uh, I, I guess that works now. Who's flipping the field here, our offense against the Giants' defense, which is actually going to be a base 3-4, not the traditional 4-3 that we're always seeing that we're playing as well. We're going to be facing a 3-4 now. Now, this the, now this defense actually has – it's got some talent on it now. I don't want to front. I'm not going to get crazy. Giants' defense got a little talent now. Let's talk about it. Former Colt great, Jihad Ward, slated to be the starter right now. Nose tackle, Dexter Lawrence, out of Clemson a few years back. Then you got Leonard Williams. I don't know what he does, but he has a big contract and he's a star on their defense, supposedly. Then you talk right about on. the <laughs> USC. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, then you got Kayvon Thibodeau out of Oregon, top five pick in the draft. How quickly is he going to be? You got the linebackers, Tay Crowder. You got Blake Martinez, who is solid, by the way. 
but this is the thing for the Giants. They're two pass rushers off the edge, stand-up linebackers. Kayvon Thibodeau, and let me shout out Rashad McGinnis here real quick, his guy from last year, Aziz Ajilari out of Georgia last year. That, that combo right there, for years to come, we won't face the Giants again until, what is it, 2026. Yeah. That, that's a good combo right there. That is a real good combo. Kayvon, if he can be a great stand-up pass rusher, Aziz, who actually had a really good year as a rookie, that looks really good. That looks really good, honestly. I can't front, man. Um, you know, they got depth as well. O'Shane Zimenez out of Old Dominion a few years back, yep. a solid depth pass rusher as well. Uh, Destin's guy, I'm not uh, – Micah McFadden, I guess. You know, he can play, I guess. I don't know. Uh, oh, he went to the Giants? That's he, got he, dra- he got drafted by the Giants. Oh, okay. No, really you didn't. No, you didn't. No UDFAs over here, man. He was drafted. <laughs> then you go to the secondary. You got Cordell Flott. You got Xavier McKinney, solid safety. You got Julian Love, solid safety. And then you got Adoree Jackson, former Titan great Adoree Jackson. Talking about this matchup here, guys, I'll be honest. I think the the offensive line versus the front seven is going to be tough, in my opinion. No, I, I think Dexter Lawrence does some good things as the nose tackle. Leonard Williams, he's got length. He's strong. As a pass rusher, I don't know if he's up there in Tier Mm -hmm. 1 or Tier 2, but as a run-stopping defensive lineman, dude, he's stout. And then you got the linebackers. Blake Martinez can play. Tay Crowder is, is solid. Then you look at the pass rushers. They don't have just two guys. They have depth. That front seven is going to be a battle for me personally going up against our offense. What do you think, Rashad? I like, I like the matchup of the interior guys, you know, uh, Leonard Williams, he's going to get a lot of penetration as far as the run game goes. He doesn't really go upfield as far as getting after the quarterback. So, so that's good. We should be able to keep a clean pocket for Matt, but those guys that's coming off the edge, man, they're going to be coming. They are going to pin their ears back. Uh, Aziz, I think he had what seven, seven or eight sacks last year. Uh, Thibodeau is, is a stud, man. Like he is a stud and has bona fide double digit sack potential. So that's a guy we're gonna have to really be worried about. The linebackers, like you say, Blake Martinez is, is a baller. The other guys are pretty solid. I'm looking forward to seeing our passing game against this secondary, though. This secondary has to prove that they can do it on the field. I'm not sold on them. They have a couple of nice players, but I'm not sold on them as a unit. I think this is one of those games where Matt Ryan could get going and possibly pick this secondary apart if he gets in rhythm early. I think that's the type of game that this has to be for the Colts. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BSTABLE2 at manscaped.com be stable to that code is going to be in the description it's going to be in the comment section make sure you go and check that out get 20 percent off at manscaped.com with be stable blue be stable too and unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped this is what what's going to get interesting let's talk about washington okay because th- they have a they have a guy that was a Colt last year. Uh, you know, played solid, did some got solid things, right? You, you some just guy. don't know. So, some guy, you know. I don't know who this guy could be. I mean, I, I think Rashad, his name is escaping me. I mean, it. I, I'm trying to think of it. Like, who played um, in, in Indianapolis last year? That's what I'm trying to think of. Oh, Carson Wentz, that's the guy. Carson Wentz returns to Indianapolis week eight of the NFL 2022 season, ladies and gentlemen. Now, talking about that offense is going to be interesting. So, obviously, let's go through it right real quick. Carson Wentz, quarterback, running back, Antonio Gibson, J.D. McKissick, Brian Robinson. Those are actually two really solid. That's a stable back. A uh, uh, stable room of running backs. I'll just might I'll add that in there. Terry McLaurin right now, 
Right now, they're going through some issues with his contract right now. Could he be potentially traded? Could that situation get bad? Who knows? But right now, he is slotted to be their number one guy. You got Curtis Samuel, who from Ohio State in Carolina, you know, did some really solid things. I like him personally. This last year with Taylor Heineke, I think Curtis Samuel only played in like, what, three games, a nagging hamstring injury, nagging ankle injury, just could never get on the field. And then wide receiver, Jahar Dotson. This was a guy that we thought was a first-round pick in, in this draft. He's a rookie. He's solid. He's almost like just a bigger, better K.J. Hamler from a few years ago. Can line up in the slot, and he is going to burn you. You got tight end Logan Thomas. Obviously, he's been dealing with some injuries, hoping and praying for him this season. Then you could go to the offensive line. You got Charles Leno Jr. at left tackle, Andrew Norwell, who is solid at left guard. Chase Ruler, Rullier at center, Wes Schwitzer at right guard, and then Sam Cosme at right tackle. So looking at that offense, our defense, I, I'm, I'm questionable for our secondary against their wide receivers because we know Terry McLaurin's going to bring the heat. We know he's going to come and do his thing. Is me personally – which matchup better suits Stephon Gilmore? I don't know, man. I, I think this might be a game where Stephon Gilmore actually actually might get shown up a little bit because all three of these wide receivers are guys that can move, stick. They're shifty, man. These are guys that are shifty in offenses, can play any type of position on the wide receiver position, play anywhere, basically. He is a gadget player. It's a little bit questionable. Obviously, Kenny Moore, Isaiah Rogers, can they fare a little bit better? But not not focusing too much on Carson Wentz, but talking about the wide receivers. Now, clearly, again, I don't find it as big of a deal as some people are making it with Carson Wentz, but we'll get into that here in a little bit. But as for our uh, their wide receivers against our secondary, how do you see that, you know, for right now, who do you see uh, having the edge in that matchup? Um, it's it's going to be big to see their wide receivers as a unit because, you know, we never really got to see what the Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin pairing really looked like because Curtis Samuel has been hurt for the majority of his time in Washington. So we haven't really gotten a chance to really see him. Um, one thing I do like about this matchup as far as for the Colts is that it's probably going to be Dotson. Well, I guess it can be Dotson or Samuel that's coming out of the slot. I think it'd be a good matchup for Kenny Moore. I think Kenny Moore is going to be fine. And I actually think our CB2 match is matches up well with this team. I think Isaiah Rodgers is going to be good. I think the smaller, quicker receivers is going to be ideal for Isaiah, Isaiah Rodgers with his speed, his quickness, his size. When we play teams like this with a smaller receiving core, I think Isaiah is going to thrive. You know, it, it might be Stephon Gilmore, like you said earlier, who has a little trouble with these guys. So probably whoever's the biggest out of these guys, um, size wise, and and the least least quick out of these guys is probably who Stefan will be matched up against. I know he's not trying to chase down uh, rookies going a thousand miles an hour. With guys that's full of energy, probably going to take a veteran. It's probably going to take Curtis Samuel. I'm not sure if Curtis Samuel still has that pop after the injury. We have to see it. It's been two years since he's been productive in the NFL. So until I see these guys healthy, I'm going to go with our secondary in this matchup, especially when Carson Wentz is the one throwing them the ball. I could just never edge a position group that's going to depend on Carson Wentz, the advantage. I just can't give them the advantage, man. As long as they're depending on that guy, I can't do it. And that's where we bring up Carson Wentz in the discussion, right on it. Look, look at – Look at Rashad just giving me a good assist right there into another <laughs> into another uh, conversation right here. So Carson Wentz, let's talk about him real quick because he obviously the quarterback is the key to everything on offense, how the wide receivers perform, but also this offensive line. I'm not entirely sure. Charles Leno played great last year, got him a, a contract extension. Sam Cosme struggled. He was a rookie, though. Had a full year in the NFL strength and conditioning program. Let's see how, what that does for him uh, this season. But my biggest thing is, again, not trying to knock him. But if you can get pressure on him, we've seen what he does when he gets pressure. 
both more bad than good, but the, he has done good with some pressure. Let's let's just be 100 about this. We saw 17 mm-hmm. games last year, did some solid things with pressure, but he just crumbled when pressure came. Um it, do you expect, man, dude, this will be so hilarious. Right now, what do you think the percentage odds are? And do you think DraftKings should make this a place bet on Carson Wentz throwing a left-handed interception? I'm taking it over. If they set it at, at a half, oh, at 0.5, whether Carson Wentz will throw a left-handed interception, I'm taking it over. I seen what he does when he starts backpedaling. Man, it's frightening, man. He he he's afraid. But like you say though, I did see him get blitzed and make a couple of downfield throws, big time throws when he when he has been under pressure. But one thing we know about Carson Wentz, man, if you can get a consistent pass rush on him, he's gonna crack. He's either gonna get sacked, fumbled, or he's gonna force some passes in the tight coverage, and that's what a coach will be able to really benefit. And I expect with that offensive line protecting him, he's going to be under pressure. That That's not a good group. They will be in the bottom 10 offensive lines in the NFL, in my opinion. You know, they, they have a couple of guys. Charles Leno, it, he played well. He played well. He, he's not an anchor, though. He's not like an anchor left tackle. You know, he's nobody that – Cosme struggled. I do expect him to be better in his second season. You know, he did what any rookie do. You know, he started off slow. Started playing better toward the end of the season, but I, I still don't see him being a force. Uh, at right guard, Washington's going to have trouble on the offensive line, <laughs> believe me. So you're going to have a chance to get after Carson Wentz early and often. It's whether you take advantage of that. We know Gus Bradley don't like the blitz. He liked to get it done with his front four. We've seen that with the Raiders. He led the NFL in pressures, and he blitzed the least amount in the NFL. So that gives you a perfect identity of who Gus Bradley is, and I think he'll stick with the same game plan here. I don't think it'll be many blitzes, but I think he will find ways to get pressure with this attack front that he's teaching in Indianapolis. So I'm not going to say this because he's a Texas Longhorn, but I don't don't care if it's Yannick Ngakwe, Quiddy Pay. Ben Banigood, Dio Dangbo, Taekwon Lewis. I'm, ta- I'm, I'm taking those matchups against Sam Cosby. <laughs> against Cosby, I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm taking that matchup. I, I, you can hate me all you want. You can call it bias. I don't care. I'm taking that matchup every I'm so time. glad the Colts didn't take him, man. I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad, too. There were so Ooh. many people. You had so many tackles. Here's the thing yeah. people don't acknowledge. Most of the tackles either flamed out or got reverted to guards. Yep. Dylan Raddins got put as a guard in Tennessee, and that was Destin's guy. Sam Cosme struggled. Now, again, these guys were rookies, so let's give them a little bit more time. But overall, they suck. All right? So <laughs> that, that's, just, that's just all you got to think about. Let's, let's get to Washington defense here real quick, okay? Now, this, oh, uh, you know, this is, a Ron, this is starting to look like a Ron Rivera defense. Uh, Rashad, this is starting to look like a Ron. You know, I got love for my fellow Mexican, my fellow, you know, Ron Rivera. I got love for him. Talk about the defense. We know who Chase Young is, obviously. Coming back from an ACL tear, unfortunately. Deron Payne, right now, there's some struggles in his contract negotiations. It was reported that he actually left OTAs today due to his contract situation not being resolved. So, We'll see what happens there. I do love me some Deron Payne. Washington, will y'all take Grover Stewart? Hello? You know, anything? Uh, but Jonathan Breaker, Allen. Breaker. Jonathan Allen. Oh, dude, this guy is one of my oh, favorite yeah. interior guys, man. I oh, love yeah. Jonathan Allen so much. He is so strong. You can't run on him. You can't. He, he's like a DeForest Buckner, but he plays mm-hmm. in Washington, so you don't ever hear about him. He That's actually a good, good comparison for him. He clogs up the middle. He is so strong. He doesn't get moved. As a pass rusher, there are some games where you feel like he could take a little bit much more advantage of this matchup. Maybe leaves a little bit more to be desired in a pass rushing standpoint. But as a pure defensive lineman, 
This dude is so good. I love Jonathan Allen. And then you got Montez Sweat. Obviously, that's the guy Washington took in, I want to say, the 2019 uh, draft. After the Colts traded back, Washington traded up, took Montez Sweat out of Mississippi, Mississippi State. Then you go to the linebackers. Cole Holcomb, solid. He's solid, solid in pass coverage. Jamin Davis, my guy. Jamin Davis out of Kentucky last year. Kentucky. The dude, he he's – He's supposed to be their Luke Keekley type. And he played a little bit like Luke Keekley, but again, in as a rookie, the play caller for that defense, he got lost a few times. Well, a lot of times actually. He got lost. Yeah. You know, he didn't put the greatest stuff on tape. But man, I'm really hoping for a big bounce back year, except for week eight from this guy. I'm really hoping for a good bounce back year. I love this guy. Then you got David Mayo, solid vet as a Sam linebacker. Then you go to the secondary. Now, this is where you think, like, man, okay, this is what can, can get solidified. You got Kendall Fuller, who we know is good at corner. You got Cameron Curl at strong safety. You got Bobby McCain as free. And then you got William Jackson the third. This defense did suffer some injuries last year. So if you watch the game against Dallas or who, whoever, and they got smoked, like, six of their starters were out, if we're being honest. Like, they did struggle with some injuries, but man, on paper, that defense looks solid. They look really good. Yeah, man, that that defense probably is the most, I, w- I would say, disappointing unit uh, last season, only because of what they were two years ago. You know, there was a borderline elite defense, Chase Young's rookie year. So when it came to the second season and he went down with an injury, uh, they had a lot of injuries in the secondary. People were expecting this to be a top three defense all year last season. And they just got off on the wrong foot, man. It seemed like they was unable to recover. People were throwing the ball all over, all over this defense. And, and, and shout out to the DB's coach, a good friend of mine, uh, Chris Harris. A very, very talented guy. A guy that was in the running to become the coach defensive coordinator. Was actually one of the finalists. Uh, and didn't get it. So he went back to to Washington. Well, he's going to do a fine job coaching up those DBs. If they could just remain healthy, this is a very strong group on paper. If not the best D line, defensive line, it's probably top two, top three defensive lines as a whole in the NFL. Bonafide pass rushers, bonafide run stoppers inside and outside. This is a talented group. The way to attack this group is to attack the secondary. But you won't have much time to do it. I tell you that. That, that defensive line is going to get after you. They're going to hit you early and often. So you got to have to, you got to have a plan to attack these guys quickly. A lot of quick game is the remedy to getting points and, and moving the ball on these guys. My thing is going to be about the offensive line. Again, right now you do have questions at left tackle and right guard. How are you going to be able to face? Because every single one of these defensive linemen, there's no weakness on this defensive line. There's not one guy where you're just going to run at. There's not one guy that you're just going to run this play to. Or if it's a pass play, if it's an RPR, are you going to roll out that way? There's not. Montez with Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, and then you got freaking Chase, Chase Young. That's not going to be no pushover on the defensive line. So right now at left tackle, God forbid someone – Whoever is at left tackle, again, I don't give a damn if it's Matt Pryor or Bernard Ryman. I don't care. Just be able to block these pass rushers. Just do it, please. For Chase Young, I do like the Matt Pryor matchup a little bit more. No bias, technically. I can see that. No bias because he's stronger than Bernard Ryman. Right, I think, right. I, I think right now, if they met up together, Bernard Raymond would be driven into the ground six feet under, if I'm being honest, okay? Uh, if, if I'm just being honest, okay? Let's, right. not, yeah. let's not pretend like the Chase Young is the freaking next coming of Brock Lesnar or something, but he's just so good. But on the Dude. offensive line right now, I will give Washington the edge because they just mm-hmm. don't have any weaknesses and they don't have any questions on mm-hmm. that defensive line we have questions as great as Braden Smith Brian Kelly and Quentin Quentin Nelson who's the best lineman in football you still have two other positions that you're gonna have to block guys at that's just that's just how it goes 
That's how I see that matchup. Now, again, this is actually what we didn't do. Well, technically we did for the Giants. But for this matchup right now, today, if you had to say who wins week eight in Lucas Oil Stadium, Stadium on CBS, commentated by Jim Nance and Tony Romo, hopefully, um, who wins? I have a coach, uh, 27-17. I think uh, the Colts will win this game that emphatically, will make a statement. And uh, I know I didn't pick for the Giants. I'll go 31-14 as far as the Giants game on New Year's uh, since we didn't make a pick for that one. Give me 31-0 for the Giants. I just, just, man, dude. This is just right now. These aren't our official predictions, but um, (laughs) hey, man, come on now. Uh, For Washington, dang, man. I I said it. uh, I can't remember if I've said it on the show yet, but I know we've talked about it a little bit and I've asked myself, you know, when it comes to this rivalry, people, media are trying to create between the Colts and Carson Wentz. I feel like Carson Wentz has a lot more to be pissed off about than the Colts do. Like I agree. I agree with that. Like he's been ridiculed in the media. Chris Mm -hmm. Ballard didn't back him up. Jim Ursay obviously made his comments very clear and I don't know what went on in the locker room. I'm not sure if there were any relationships, uh, strange. I mean, I did, I do know a couple relationships where like, Mm -hmm. okay, he's just here, but nothing that was like bad, you know, nothing like I can't come to work because of this guy. Mm. I, I just see Carson Wentz coming into this game hyped, and he's going to try and put on a show to shut up the crowd because he has Twitter. He saw all those comments that people not named Michael Pivia and, you know, <laughs> Rashad McGinnis made. I, I, yeah. I think for right now, I'm going to give Washington the win. Wow. I, I'll wow. give them the win because this is like that revenge game again. Oh. Indianapolis, what do you have to be upset about? Like, you traded for a guy, it didn't work out okay. But Carson Wentz, you were brought here. You were sold on a vision, and they, mm-hmm. they turned on you and everything. Like, of course, that was his own doing, of course, and the team had a little bit to do with that. But that's not how he's going to look at it. When it comes time for Sunday week eight, y'all did me dirty, and, and, and it wasn't yep. my fault. You got to try it day, up. At the end of the day, he could know deep down in his heart, I wasn't the only one, but you know what? Come game day, I was the only one. You know what? I'm coming for y'all's heads. So right now, I'll I'll give them the edge. And it's not like I'm giving a trash team the edge, man. They have solid weapons. Their offensive line is is solid. Their defense, man. Golly. I feel like I need some Manscaped cologne to calm me down or something. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Let's get into the final team in the final segment of this show, guys. The Philadelphia Eagles. That's right. Yeah. Our guy, Nick Sirianni, returning to Indianapolis as the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles in his first year, led the Eagles to a playoff appearance, but failed to score a single damn point in that game. Uh, let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about it. Because, I mean, we, we could sit here and talk about Nick Sirianni all we want. We got to get into this team, okay? I don't know. I don't know about you, but this is one of the games that I'm highlighting because this is going to be a really good game. I feel like so. Let's start on the offense. Quarterback Jalen Hurts. Okay, and now we're getting serious. You got Miles. Sanders. <laughs> you got Miles Sanders at running back. Devontae Smith, bad boy. We know what he did at Alabama. Did some solid things this year when it wasn't thrown over 10 yards. When it was thrown under 10 yards, he did some solid things. That's because who his quarterback is. Then you got Quez Watkins, but again, they traded for A.J. Brown. So that receiver group already looks solid. Jalen Rager hasn't worked out well for him so far in the NFL. Is he going to get cut? Is he going to get traded? I don't know. Is he a return specialist? I don't know. But for right now, I got to include him in that deal because he's a former first-round pick. Um, and that's really that, that's all there is to it. So hopefully he can get it together, except for when he plays us. But so far, it has not been good. 
Then you look at the tight end, Dallas Goddard. Come on now. We know how good this guy is. Uh, he's solid. But the, the offensive line, let's talk about this. A dude that came out of nowhere, basically. Came out of nowhere. Jordan Mailata. I really hope I pronounced that right. Jordan Mailata literally just came out of nowhere. I think he came from overseas or something. And completely play rugby or something. Huh? And, 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 and completely won this left tackle job. Not only that, became one of the better left tackles in the football. That's crazy. He didn't even play real football and then got to the States and said, man, I'm better than all you. Must. I'm better than y'all. And now he's like a top five left tackle in the game. Got a big time extension. Like, man, where the hell does this dude come from? That's the left tackle. Then you go to the left guard, Landon Dickerson, solid, 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 perform solid. You got the center, Jason Kelsey. We already know who he is, man. Super Bowl champion, going to be a Hall of Famer, been one of the better, if not the best centers in the game for the last, what, eight years? So man. that's who he is. And then you got right guard, obviously. Uh, oh, man, I can't remember his name. Someone retired who was manning right guard. Who, who was it that just retired? It wasn't Lane Johnson. He's the right tackle. I was tackle. about to say Lane Johnson. No. Uh, Is it Brooks? Yes, Brooks. Landon Brooks. I think that's his name. Landon Brooks. Uh, yeah, he did retire. Stephanie no, it's not, it's not Landon. What is, what is it? Just look up on Google Brooks Eagles. like Brandon Brooks. Brandon, Brandon Brooks. Brooks. Okay, yes. Yeah. I, knew, I knew it was a N. Like Landon, a huh? You said like a Landon, din. yeah. Landon, Brandon. I, I knew it was a in there, right? I got, the th- I got, I got three letters right. Okay, give me credit. <laughs> um, yeah, he 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 retired, retired as a Super Bowl champion again. Been one of the better right guards in the league for the Absolutely. last nine years, and then stepping in his place for right now is Isaac Samalo. Samalo. So let's talk about that uh, offense real quick, man. <sighs> I'll say this, and I think it could be possibly quick. But if they had a real quarterback, I would fear this team so much more. I would, too. You took the words right out of my mouth. If they had a real quarterback, I would be scared of this team. Let's remember, this team had the number one rushing offense in the NFL last year. Number one. That's because but, they got three running backs on the field and no quarterback. <laughs> That's one hell of a game plan for Nick Sirianni to have, man. He, he knows how to do it. Um, yeah, added A.J. Brown, another running back. <laughs> there, you, there you go. <laughs> All of his game designs are going to be within five yards. <laughs> you don't even need to employ safeties. You just need to have linebackers for this game wow. plan against the Eagles, dude. You don't even need safeties. Um <laughs> Have like six damn linebackers on the bro, <laughs> but um, okay. So legitimately, their offensive line is good, man. Their their offensive is. line is good. They are going to give Jalen Hurts time to see where he can throw five yards out. But if he doesn't, he's gonna run, and he is an athlete. If he wasn't playing quarterback, I legit think he could be a safety or a running back, or potentially a slot wide receiver. That's how athletic he is. Um, he's strong. So the offensive line is the thing that makes me pause, but let, let's just say, let's just say for the sake of argument, Jalen Hurts makes a jump with it, with his arm talent. He can, he can make solid throws. He can throw one through six on, on the route tree. Let's just say he can go one through six, not like seven through nine or anything. He can go one through six. This is going to be a dangerous offense. AJ Brown. We know we're Colts fans. He was in Tennessee. We know what he represents. You got Devontae Smith, who even played at a high level at his rookie year. But now, if Jalen Hurts could take a jump, he gets even more dangerous. Quez Watkins, Quez Watkins, a downfield threat, speedster. Then you got Dallas Goddard, a tight end, one of the better tight ends in the game. Our defense against that offense, obviously the defensive line, offensive line matchup is going to be great. The secondary, where are we gonna? Who's gonna win that matchup? But it all predicates on how Jalen Hurts plays. That's really it. I mean, they can run the ball, of course, but again, 
the reason why I don't fear the athletic quarterbacks too much is because of our freakish athletic linebackers that can run same 40s as these guys. So for right now, I'm going to focus on the wide receivers and secondaries. A.J. Brown, obviously Brown and Gilmore are going to be that matchup. On the inside, Watkins and Moore, or I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to operate like Moore can't kick outside. Hell, Moore could be outside, and Rodney McLeod can be the could be the nickel. He could slide in. Nick Cross can explode. He can be whatever the case may be. There's so many things that I love about our defense that we can deploy so many looks, so many lineups out there because of the versatility in the scheme that this. Uh, scheme the versatility that this scheme <laughs> offers. I'm, I'm over here watching this game as well, and I'm getting tongue-tied. Um, our secondary against their wide receivers. Stephon Gilmore, A.J. Brown, I don't know who, who I give the edge there. I think I might go A.J. Brown, honestly. I, I think I just might because – well, actually, no. Let me go Stefan because I keep remembering who the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles is. If he throws a 20 yard uh, post, probably going to be five yards behind him. And Julian Blackman's going to be there for the interception. I'll like it. So our secondary against their wide receivers, I'll take it. The safeties again, it's going to be big. Who's going to be a spy on the quarterback. Who's going to be accountable for Miles Sanders. Cause he loves catching the ball out of the backfield, man. He loves catching that football out of the backfield. So it's really going to be about our secondary and how we keep things. This is going to be one of those games where you want to keep things in front of you. I'm not the biggest thing. Like, obviously, with this past freaking stupid scheme that we had, keep everything in front of you. No, don't keep everything in front of you. Because the way you teach us allows them to get by us eventually. So this scheme, let's keep everything in front of us because of who the quarterback is for the Philadelphia Eagles at the end of the day. Yeah, I feel the same way about Jalen Hurts. Um, I just didn't see the development, the, the steps forward as a passer. Uh, I didn't see him going through his progressions too often, hitting guys on the backside. I just didn't see it. Whatever the offense was designed to do, one read, pretty simple for him. Nick Sirianni kept it real easy for him, real simple. He had no adjustments at the line of scrimmage that he was making, wasn't just in the protections. He kept it really basic for him. And I think that's the plan again. But they had a great rushing attack. So the key to beating this team first is stopping the run. They, Like I said, they led the NFL in rushing. They didn't realize they could run the ball until freaking week six. The beginning of the season, they just refused to run the ball. And then when they finally started running the ball, they said, holy shit, this worked. And they finally decide to start running the ball, and they end up having the number one rushing offense. But with that offense, it didn't develop Jalen Hurts. It did Jalen Hurts no favor as far as becoming a better passer. So until he takes the next step, as much as I love the skill players, A.J. Brown, stud, Devontae Smith, stud, Dallas Goddard, stud, Miles Sanders, they're talented all around the board. The offensive line is good. But it all rests on the shoulder of Jalen Hurts. Has he developed? Has he put the work in this offseason? Has he got better as a passer? Because if he haven't, I could tell you one thing. This is his last shot. They gave him all the weapons he need. They gave, this is his last shot. He don't produce this year. You can bet your bottom dollar that the Eagles being a quarterback sweepstakes in this upcoming draft. They just can't afford to waste such a good nucleus on Jalen Hurts. And I think that's going to be whether this game decides to be a good game or the Colts take it clearly, it's going to entirely rest on what Jalen Hurts shows up and what, what he looks like this season. That's crazy, man. That's <laughs> crazy. It's the truth, bro. Dude, if you told me in 2019 that Jalen Hurts is the starting quarterback of an NFL team, I would have not have believed you Yeah, at all. Yeah, bro. He even went to Oklahoma and still looked like the same damn Jalen Hurts to me. Same one. Like he even he even cut the dreads off and just went full buzz cut. Like it still looked like Jalen Hurts. He went from bro. He went from Alabama to Oklahoma and literally just left the culture behind and got a buzz cut. He looked like the same person in Nick Saban offense and in Lincoln Riley. <laughs> I don't even know how that's possible, but 
Jalen Hurts managed to do it. Yeah, uh, obviously Steve Sarkeesian was the man of those uh, of those offenses, and now he's down in Texas ruining that university as well. So probably still getting drunk. Probably Go still ahead. getting drunk, honestly. Yeah, he's going to be out of a job soon. I'll try. To, I'll guarantee that. Now let's switch <laughs> to the defense. The defense. Now this is going to be – man, let's talk about this defense. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> this defense in Philadelphia is actually pretty solid. Okay, let's start at the defensive line. Starters right now look like they're going to be Brandon Graham on the outside, Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave, and Derek Barnett. Now, that's a solid group, right? That's a really stout interior. Damn good, damn good group. Damn, damn good, good group. group. But guess what? They just drafted freaking Jordan Davis. Yep. And they have Josh Sweat, who is a solid pass rusher, a speedster. Like, man, dude. This might be one of those. Now, again, if we're going to face teams that have great uh, talent across the board on defensive line, I have to give them the edge because of our questions at right guard and left tackle. And then when a starter is named, I have to see how that starter is playing in the season. So I got to give Philly the edge here, man. Two great interior players, Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave. That's good. And then you go to the outside. Brandon Graham may not be what he once was, but he's still solid. He's a vet. He's older now, but he's a vet. Derek Barnett, he's good. Solid. And then you plug in Josh Sweat. And then plug in Jordan Davis. Like... Hassan Reddick. <sighs> you forgot? Freaking Hassan. I'll, I was trying to build up to it. I was trying to build oh. up to it. Oh, um, my bad. I was trying to build up to it and make the audience think that that was it, but then... Had one more big old bomb to drop. Um, this team also signed freaking Hassan Reddick. So clearly, if you want to go based off just as an entire room, you got to say Philly probably has the best defensive line in, in the league. You, pro- you probably have to say that. I mean, probably. I, I mean, the Rams, of course, yeah. they lost Von Miller. They lost Sebastian Joseph Day. We got to be acknowledging of that, uh, Rashad. It's probably the be... Eagles or, 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 the, or Washington. Or, the or Washington. That, that's crazy, yeah. though. That That's just depth all along the line, yeah. dude. That's nasty, man. That's going to be a game where we're going to have to mix it up really good, get yeah. the ball out quick, and run the football. Yeah. But again, yep. Javon Hargrave – and Fletcher Cox are just not guys you just run the ball on. That's just it. Especially right. Javon Hargrave. He's been one of the best, if not the best, run-stopping nose tackle in the game. You don't just say, okay, we can't pass, let's run. No! I got mad love for Ryan Kelly and Quentin Nelson again, but they just came off of some pretty me- mediocre years. So let's see if health and obviously praying for Ryan Kelly's mental to, to be right. Um I got to get Philly the edge, clearly. I have to. Yeah, me too. I mean, we don't even need to spend much time on that. That's, that's kind of like a clear one for me. Now, here's where it gets a little bit interesting, okay? Now, right now, they're, they're playing in a base 4-3, so I don't know why they have Hassan Reddick listed as a Sam linebacker. Like, who the hell is he covering what? in space? Really? No. He's not covering anybody. He is going to run, not cover. He's going to run. Let's just make that clear. But the linebacker group is solid as well. Kaiser White coming to Philadelphia from the Chargers. You got TJ Edwards, played college ball at Wisconsin. Wisconsin always got def- defense, man. He was the man of that defense in Wisconsin. Then you got Davion Taylor, who they drafted. Now you go to the secondary you got Darius Slay. We know what he's about. You got Kayvon Wallace, who I really liked in that draft coming out of Clemson. He was really solid, played some solid national championship games. You got Anthony Harris. Anthony Harris and Rodney McLeod were sort of the two safeties Philadelphia was choosing between because both of them were up for contracts. Who do we go with, Rodney McLeod or Anthony Harris? Clearly, they went with uh, Anthony Harris. Now, again, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I'm just double-checking here. Okay, all right. Um, And then they just signed who we've talked about on the show, James Bradbury. Honestly, 
Rashad, on paper, this looks like it could be the best defense in football. I, I, I'm sorry. I know we've talked about, like, who could we take our defense over? Maybe Buffalo. Maybe Buffalo. But Philadelphia has just not been talked about enough. They haven't. They just have so much talent. And just getting away from the defensive line, go to the linebackers. Go to the secondary. You got guys. You got dudes. Not just guys. Not just somebody. Dudes in linebackers, secondary. So talking about the run game in our passing offense, talk to me. How do you see this matchup on paper right now going? Uh, as a whole, I definitely favor uh, the Philadelphia defense. I think Philadelphia defense is better than the Colts offense. But I think where you have to attack is you have to attack these linebackers. Um, the, the linebackers are 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 good players, but they, some of them are unproven. A couple of them are unproven. You have to make them go out there and prove that they can play. Uh, the safeties as well. You have to go after these safeties. I love the cornerbacks. The cornerbacks, they're, they're top-notch. Darius Slate, uh, Bradbury, you, you're not going to just attack them. You know, you, they're not, that's not going to happen. This defensive line is studs all across the line. So the only place I see to attack, you have to get Naheem Hines out of the backfield, get him matched up against some of these linebackers, or you have to find a way for your tight ends to attack these safeties. So the middle of the field is kind of where you want to attack because the boundaries, the edges – with Bradbury and Slay, it's going to be pretty much sewn up. So you want to attack the middle of the field. That's where you're going to have success at with this Eagles defense. And you're going to have to get the ball out of your hands really quickly because that defensive line is not for play. But if I had to edge one side of the ball, I'm going to edge the Eagles defense over the Indianapolis Colts offense at this current time. That's honestly, guys, that's got it. And I kind of waited for Philadelphia to be the last team we talk about because this is the team, really, if they just get average quarterback play from Jalen Hurts, they're winning this division. They are winning it. They got the offense. They got the offensive line, the running game. They got the weapons. They got the pass rushing. They got the run stopping. They got the coverage in linebackers. They got the run stopping in linebackers. They got the, the the secondary. Nick Sirianni has done a real good job. Jonathan Gannon, dude, to go from what he went with from Indianapolis to Philadelphia, dude, he got a defense on his hands now. He's got some dudes on him now. So, you know, obviously it's going to be Gus Bradley versus Nick Sirianni and Frank Wright. Man, I can't – oh, who's the defensive coordinator for, for Philadelphia? Um. Can't think of it off the top of my head, but man, said Jonathan Gannon. Huh? Oh wait, what? What the hell? I just <laughs> said that. I know. <laughs> oh That's man, dude, we need to wrap it up. That's a sign. We need to wrap yeah. it. I need to go to bed. Uh, but yeah, Jonathan Gannon versus Re- Frank Reich. This is going to be one hell of a year to face the NFC East because even though they are the NFC least right now. They're getting better. Philadelphia and Washington made some great strides this year. And Dallas sort of just stayed stuck in the middle, in my opinion. Uh, They didn't necessarily improve too much. Like I said, James Washington is solid. Jalen Tolbert, he's a rookie. We'll see what he does. But again, Zeke Elliott. Who who you got in the Eagle game before we get off? Because we're getting off topic. I I. I'm going to give the Colts the win because if you're on the road, if it's a tight game, I think you're going to have Jalen Hurts try and win you the game with your arm. Uh, And for those reasons, quoting Mark Cuban here, for those reasons, I'm going with the Colts, in my opinion, just because of the quarterback um, advantage because defenses are almost identical. The offensive lines are identical. uh, Talent. Ours got a couple question marks, but their receiving core, you may take over ours. Running back will take ours over theirs. I'll take Dallas Goddard over all four of these tight ends that we have. Yeah. But it's going to be interesting, man, guys. We wanted to give you guys a different type of show to bring you, you know, 
give y'all some knowledge about where our opponents this year, wh- where they are right now, where they are in talent, depth, roster wise, matchup wise. And we're playing the NFC East this year. All right. Going to Dallas Sunday night football. I will be there for that game. Sunday night football in December. You're playing Philadelphia at home. You're playing Washington. Carson Wentz returned to Indianapolis week eight. You're playing that in um, in Indianapolis. And then on New Year's, you're going to New York week 17. Stay in the damn hotel. Don't need no funny business going on. All right. It's Absolutely. New it's New York. Ain't nothing that great in New York. All right. So, guys, I don't know what else to say. Um, that'll be it for the show, guys. That'll that'll be it. Again, if you are not already, please subscribe to the Blue Stable Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your favorite Colts podcast. Find us there, whether if it's Podbean, uh, iHeart, Spotify, Apple, YouTube. Click that notification bell. That way you can stay up to date when every video drops, not just our show. Maybe our shorts that our, that our guy Marcus does. Maybe it's the fantasy table with Luke Verkamp. You don't want to miss those either, guys. But other than that, again, please, we would really appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, interact in the comments with everybody. And again, get 20% off on any order plus free shipping and handling from Manscaped. If you just want some shirts, if you just want some comfortable boxer brief, guys, go and get 20% off. You won't regret it one way or the other. So, Rashad, any closing remarks before we wrap it up? Shout out to my boy, Dustin, man. Uh, soft, softball, softball player of the year. But I did I did want to say on a serious note, um, prayers to the families of the people out there in Texas. Uh, 14 dead last time I saw it. 14 children dead, one adult. Um, prayers. My heart goes out to y'all family. That was truly heartbreaking to see that today on television, man. Hopefully they figure out something to do. My prayers are with y'all. My heart is with y'all. Definitely. And us at the Blue Stable do back you guys up and we support everything that Rashad basically just said. We have the same sentiments, the same thoughts, same thoughts and prayers for everyone, guys. So again, this has been the Blue Stable Podcast. I am Michael Pevia. He is Rashad McGinnis. Destin on record day. We'll see you guys later. (laughs) We'll see you guys later, guys. We'll check you out next week. And we got a special, special show for you guys next week. Stay tuned. And again, if you are wanting to keep up to date, hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell. See you next week.